Hello there, good day. Welcome to the Google Test Framework Part 3 and the topic of today's video is text fixtures. So what are text fixtures? Uh, this is a placeholder for common test code and which can be used in multiple tests. So let's go ahead and see the code to understand. Okay, so now we know how to write test in Google Test. So let's try to write test for this class called my class which is having a value called base value which can be incremented by calling this increment function. So let's try to write one increment saying that increment by 5 for example. Now we know that we write test case in arrange, act and assert mode. So the arrangement will be I'll create the instance of my class give it a initial value act will be i'll call the increment function and pass the value to increment and assert will be i'll say assert equal c dot get value it should be 105 so let me just go ahead and run this test to verify that everything working fine yes so test is passing so since we are Checking the increment thing, we'll not write only one test, we'll write multiple tests. So right now, this test is increment by 5. Uh, I'll end up writing another test called increment by 10 for example. So what I will do, pass 10 over here, change it to 10 and expected output is 110. Let me go ahead and compile and everything works fine now you can see that the arrange part which is creating the instance and passing the initial value is similar and if you end up writing let's say 20 30 test cases everywhere we have to repeat it and if you change it once uh, we have to change in each and every test case that may be error prone so to so precisely solve this problem google test has something called text fixtures so text fixtures are the place where we can write these common code and the test fixture class has a uh, method called setup as well as teared out which will get called automatically all the time. So let me try to write the test fixture of this class. So the way to write text fixture is I can create a struct uh, let's say calling it my class test. It should be publicly derived from testing test okay so let me have a my class instance as this and there is a function called setup small p and let me create a instance of it new my class and let me pass 100 over here and there is another function called tear down and I'll just do a cleanup over here okay so this is my text fixture class which has the common code which is being called here now how to call this text fixture class to call a text fixture we have to use it something like test underscore f f stand for fixture Instead of passing the name of the class, we have to pass the name of the structure and then we get rid of this arrange part okay. and in act part, I can say arrow because now we are using the pointer, you can give arrow over here. Similarly, for another test also, we can get rid of this arrange and do increment get and check the value so let me go ahead and compile and check if it is working something is missing somewhere this struct so we'll have to since you are using text fixture we have to make test underscore f over here and let now compile it and yes the tests are passing now you just to check that these things are actually being created so alive just printing something and 
I'll print that over here. That. Let me go ahead and save it. Compile. Run. You can see alive and dead is being called twice. So we call this test twice and alive and dead were called twice, which means setup is called, teardown is called for this text fixture. Setup is called and teardown is called for this particular text fixture also. So that's the way we write text fixtures. Okay, so uh, this is a very simple code, uh, but how do we use test fixtures for writing something complicated as for example, let's talk uh, let's take a case of stack. So let me write a full-fledged stack code. So let me write a class stack uh, And let me just use a vector over here I'm using vector for simplicity. So I'm using vector of type int I'll say v stack equal to just empty and I'll have a stack has two function push and pop. So let me call a push. I'll say int value. I have to push this value. I'll just say v stack dot push back. Push back is a function in vector with a value. Now it has also something called pop. So pop does two things. It uh, returns the value as well as takes the element out. So uh, the vector pop doesn't have, doesn't does both the things. So we'll have to take the value as int value stack, top of the stack, the value. And then we have to call stack pop back. And we'll have to return the value. Okay. But before doing that, we'll have to check that if something is there in that stack on drawn so we'll say size is greater than zero only then we are going to do do this else uh, we'll just return a failure with saying minus one and let me have one more function called size it will just return v stack Side. So that's a very basic stack. Let me just compile and check if it compiles. Okay, I have to use the minus C plus plus eleven flag. To get it compiled, so it's compiling. Fine. Now I have to write the test fixture for this particular stack testing. So let me say class let me use struct stack test I'll say public testing test so I have here, uh, here is white setup and void teardown so before implementing this I know I need to have an instance of a stack. So let me create an instance of a stack S1. In setup, what will I do? Uh, let me have some values, array of value as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, for example. And let me use some uh, C++ 11 for loop to push these values into the stack uh, we'll say s1 dot push well so I'm pushing this value to stack I don't think I have to do anything in teardown because it's not a dynamic memory so here I have a stack class here I have a text fixture for the stack class now I can write different different tests. So let me first check uh, write a pop test. So test underscore f for fixture. 
the name of the test will be stack test and subtest name can be anything let's say i am calling it a pop test so how will i do it arrange is being done setup is being already called mm, let's say i'm saying checking the pop so last popped value should be 9 in this case and assert will be while last pop value is not equal to 1 uh, I can say assert equal to assert equal um, s1 dot pop and last pop value minus minus okay so let me just go ahead compile somewhere I missed the semicolon yes here and now run it so a dot okay so it failed because instead of 567 I have written 67 so now let me go ahead and compile and it should pass and it passed so one thing i would like to tell you over here is that this is a place where the choice between assert equal to and expect equal to is clear so for example let me change this value to 19 which means um, everything will fail so, but when i run the test it just check the first item which is failed and the test stop but instead of this if we say expect equal to so when i run now even if the test fails it keep on running for each and every value which is not required in this particular case so that's the region and we want it to fail at the first instance because that's the place where i'll figure out the error i should use assert okay so when now we have a pop test uh, let me write another test mm. in this test will be let's say uh, size validity test uh, so we'll have to check for the size that every time we pop up the thing size remains same so the act will be val is equal to s1 dot size or I can use yeah this size function and we should use something like uh, I, instead we can use a for loop over here we'll say for the value whatever it is uh, value is greater than zero and value minus minus so here the popped item should not be minus one at any point of time so let me go ahead and test this code and run it um, i'll have to change back to nine in this so that so basically this is failed because i instead of equal i have to use not equal sorry for all this mistake guys just the way google test work so yes now the things have been passed so if anything problem happens over here in size it will return minus one so we have tested the size of, of this so that's the way we can write a very full-fledged application reliable test and of course if you are writing a stack stack you'll be writing more and more tests like this so this is just for the demonstration purpose i hope you i managed to convey the reasoning and usage of text fixtures in this particular video if you have any question please write it down there in comments and i'll try to answer them so thanks guys thanks a lot thanks for watching please do not forget to subscribe thank you